Welcome. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about my pipeline for texturing the Kraken Canyon you see before you. So for this, I started off in um, modeling in Blender and ZBrush. And once I was done with the high poly model, I took it into Cells Painter and baked my high poly onto my low poly mesh you see here. And now I'm going to start just talking more about the, the actual texture creation. So I start off with the base mesh or base color that I felt was uh, the kind of the right intensity uh, as well as the right shininess and the uh, you know all the kind of kind of slimy look and then once I started to create what I call color variations and these are just fill layers that I then masked out with uh, you know whether it be black and white spots um, you know I just masked those out and then started to uh, create a series of different colors and then I, here I have the highlights in which I use a curvature uh, map and I gave that kind of a purple uh, light purple look and then um, you see here right now I'm making kind of these veins uh, so I use what is called cells for my black mask and I want it to be subtle but also I want it to be fairly noticeable um, at certain certain lighting uh, so I I brought the veins down quite a bit as far as the intensity and um, just wanted to make sure that they they can be felt in certain lights. Uh, then I have some additional detail which I hand painted in. Uh, I want these spots to be a little bit a little bit uh, you know, more rough. And then I have these like pimples almost like uh, dots I wanted to have on the octopus skin. Um, these I wanted to be fairly random and also wanted to be fairly soft so I gave it just a little bit of height to kind of push it out um, and I want it to be just off pink so it, it has almost like this pimple like effect and then I put all that, those elements into a folder that I called skin uh, so therefore if I need to later on mask it out or um, even reuse it I can do that fairly easy uh, so what you see here is I'm painting in kind of the insides of the gills um, now keep in mind this is for the most part all uh, a lot of these materials are flipped and actually applied to other parts. So, for example, if I paint the gills on one side, it'll actually apply to the other side as well. So that's why you see me really working on only one side at times, and it's because um, you know they they are mirrored uh, on the opposite side. So for the tentacles, um, you know, the top part obviously has held the same uh, colors of the skin. But then I just wanted to have the bottom part be something pink have some blotchiness to it so I added in a, a fill layer that um, you know kind of had the the blotchiness I was looking for in this case the map I used was the uh, fractal scum um, and so I felt that gave me a pretty good uh, feel now one of my favorite parts about this uh, texturing process was working on the eyeballs I really think that the eyes are really interesting and you know, a lot of times we were working in uh, kind of on a beast or you know, more unique creature. So I started off by having my eye base, which was a very shiny black. And I wanted the colors actually to be very contrasting to the the octopus skin. So octopus skin's a really cool tone, it's blue, purple, and so therefore the eye itself would be kind of the opposite, which would make it orangish. And I now I did add a little bit of blue in there to kind of all tie it together. Um, but what I was doing is I was adding many spots, you know, red spots, yellow spots, orange spots kind of to build up this orange color and then the blue was more to tie it back in to kind of fade it uh, or kind of uh, balance it and neutralize it so it's not so intense um, but then the pupil itself I choose a capsule uh, shape and the capsule shape itself uh, was just something I found in the default shapes I sized it down and put it right in the middle of the eyeball I tilted it a little bit to be kind of the right orientation I want it to be and I added a blur um, blur slope as well as a warp modifier on it to give it a little bit of a uh, ununiform look and I felt like that worked pretty well um, I did also add that just a hair of negative height to kind of make it push in just a, just a little bit so in certain lighting you can see how it kind of has a little bit of a, a bump in um, and then I continued to also add in some some dots some red dots to give it a really intense look as I, I wanted this to be very a very kind of menacing eyeball look so it's very unique very different um, and therefore the different would make it look a little scary 
Uh, then I did add some levels, add uh, a horizontal um, kind of some lines, and then I made those go across the eye and I blurred them and then brought the opacity down just enough to um, make it seen but not necessarily obvious. So for the, the gun portion, I uh, opened up another substance painter file and I started working on just the the, the clean metal first. So I put a base, put the metallic up, and then I started to do color variations with black and white spots. And so these spots here are just used more or less to uh, give it a little bit of character. So some, um, you know, maybe I will adjust roughness. So some places might be uh, scruffed up a little more because they've been handled a little bit better um, or just been handled more often. Then I went in there and added some procedural dents scratches with just a height layer and some grunge maps as you here and then once i did all that um, i did add some dirt now the dirt i could use uh, a dirt generator or in this case i just hand painted some dirt but also i um i also use the just the grunge maps for the fill layers um so once i once i had all that in there i i call this my brass metal and i uh, then put it all into a folder using a black mask. I, I uh, basically selected all the items that want to be brass. And then here's the opacity map. I made the chain invisible and I created an ID um, map. And so I just selected the ID map, what part of the chain want to be visible and invisible. So it's only two polygons for the whole entire chain, which I thought worked fairly well, especially considering it's a low poly game asset. You'll be able to see the chain very rarely. I thought it was pretty good. So. Uh, now I'm working on the bone mesh or the bone texture here. Started off with just a uh, base color, some color variations, some stains. Again, I create a fill layer. I then use a mask. And I like to use mask so that way it's very easy to change later on. Now what you can see here is I am um, coming in and I'm actually drawing in some hand painted scratches. Now the reason I wanted this to be red is because it's very easy to identify or see right now. And um, so because of that, I can, you know, uh, see what I want to do. And once I'm happy with the work, I'm going to change it to a more deep maroon color. Um, so again, I just use the, the red mask a lot of times to to be able to uh, just identify what I'm working, you know, see a little easier, and then I change it once I'm happy with the, the work itself. Um, so now I'm actually going to create the steel metal. And I, in fact, I just went ahead and I copied the brass metal and then made some adjustments so I kind of changed it from the brass color to more of the deep blue steel color and then I uh, you know so I, I kind of recycled that work there and I changed a few things but for most part though it was, it's just a recycled material which I thought worked fairly well now the wooden handle uh, was tricky um, so I first made a kind of a wood layer uh, my base wood layer which I want to be a nice warm uh, color I want to have a little bit of reflection, but not terribly glossy. Um, and then I went in there with the directional noise and made some wood grain fibers. Um, and that wood grain fibers, I I stretched them out a little bit. And I noticed that the uh, 3D projection wasn't really giving me what I wanted to have, so I changed it to a planar projection. And therefore, the fibers start to look a little more organic, which I was pretty happy with there. Um, giving a little bit of a, a, a negative height so it kind of dips in. I went in there again with some um, additional colors and um, that direct that warp uh, as well as the directional noise um, to kind of make a few areas pop and highlight. Uh, so it kind of back and forth and I changed the gloss a number of times to to give it the right shininess I wanted. Um, and then went in and made some stains. Now these stains could be, again, I, I made them bright red so therefore I can identify them once I was happy with where the stains were. I then changed it to a deep magenta uh, color. Uh, and then the dust or the uh, the damage I, or dust damage I did, um, this one I actually did use a generator. Uh, so the generator was the, the dirt generator I thought worked pretty well. Uh, so for the compass, I brought in an image I found from Google. So right now here I'm Googling the image and um, I just actually turned off the tiling textures and placed it in there and I just positioned it right where I want it to be. And that's all I did for that. I mean, I did, I want to work harder, not, uh, I want to work smarter, not harder. So therefore I just 
place it in there and called it good. And then for the needle, I made the needle itself black and then just masked out the opacity layer and arrow um, that I felt gave me kind of what I needed. Again, this is something that's very subtle that you really won't notice a whole lot. So therefore I didn't put a lot of time into that particular part. So once I was happy with that, I took all this into, um, into Marmoset. So while in Marmoset, um, you know, as you see here, I'm exporting all my textures out. Uh, now in Marmoset, I wanted just to start to kind of visualize how they're gonna look together. So I started to create the materials that I just exported, started placing them in here um, and apply them with some uh, lighting. The lighting is nothing special yet. I just kept a kind of a default lighting here. Um, now I did have a little issue with my opacity map for my chain, so I had to go into Photoshop and adjust that. Um, so that didn't take a whole lot of time, but it's just a, there's just an error there, which I then corrected. And then when I dropped it in, um, my chain looked as I had wanted it to. Um, so now the next process you're seeing here is I'm actually, uh, creating what is called a, a texture atlas for decals. So I modeled all these, uh, uh, just a 3d plane. I modeled the, um, kind of these barnacles and these, this grunge texture you're seeing. Uh, then I baked it onto a, a polygon, onto a single polygon. And now what I'm doing is I'm texturing this with, you know, various different uh, materials and texture and substance painter. I went after I baked on that, that, um, you know, kind of high detail stuff. And so what I'm gonna be able to do now is I can then uh, map any one of these items you're seeing on my plane in front of you, I can actually then uh, paint that right onto the the game asset. So for example, um, let's say you know, as you saw prior, a lot of things that were repeated. Um, so let's say this, the squid itself had you know, the tentacles and a lot of the tentacles were being repeated, a lot of the texture there was being repeated. Instead of having it, you know, uh, advanced artist say, hey, I see, I see that you tiled that texture. Um, over and over, you know, instead you can kind of hide some of that repetition with what are called these decals or stickers also. Um, you can you can then uh, make them believe that they are seeing different materials, but the stickers themselves are very low poly count, tri triangle counts, and it adds uniqueness uh, kind of throughout your model. And also it's a really easy way to just place the same where you want it. So if I, for example, want to have one of these barnacles, uh, a number of these barnacles on my characters, uh, say on the on the fins or the kind of the back fins there, I can then come in and just paint or just uh, place a, this texture map wherever I want that, that to be appearing on my character. Um, so you'll see that process in just a moment, how I actually went through there. Um, so what I do is I, I created, so I selected a few areas that I want to put these barnacles on, and then I uh, just simply mapped it right wherever I want the barnacle to go or the the de decal to go. Um, and I should be, let's see, here I'm going to actually add in the, um, so I can see a little better. So now I'm actually just mapping wherever I want these this uh, sticker image decal to go, and. Then when I go back into Substance Painter, or sorry, to uh, Marmoset, you'll see that these items will appear right on top of the mesh um, because it's not actually flush the mesh, it's just, just a hair um, above the mesh. So therefore it still has this illusion that it's part of the mesh when in reality it's actually um, not entirely part of the mesh, but rather its own mesh that has own textures and opacities. So it kind of creates this illusion of being um, very unique when in reality we're actually copying things over and over. And so actually in this portion I'm just showing you the just the barrel but I end up doing this for the whole entire uh, model. So I did this for the all parts of the model for everything you see um, in the final render I um, add everything. So here I'm actually throwing that in the decal and then then will uh, add in the decal. Um, as you see, I'm creating the decal mesh. And once I put the opacity layer on there, it has this nice look. So here is my final results, my final render for this Kraken Cannon, uh, which took me roughly about four hours to complete. 
Um, so hopefully you guys got some insight on my workflow. Uh, hopefully you guys felt like you learned something. Uh, I do appreciate you guys sticking around for, for watching this. Let me know what you think in the comments.